Hello and welcome to the Virginia Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admissions Officers Virtual College Fair. We're so excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us today. Each will have six minutes to share more about their institution, but will be around for the entire session to answer any questions. My name is Jenny and I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, I have a few housekeeping items. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. However, you can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the schedule on the website. This presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash Virginia. That's strivescan.com slash Virginia. I'd now like to turn it over to our first presenter, Hollins University. Thank you, Jenny. I'm going to go ahead now and share my screen here. All right, can everyone, Jenny, can you tell me if you can see that okay? Yep, looks good. Okay, great, thank you. Hi and welcome, I'm Marissa Steele. I am the transfer coordinator here at Hollins University. So I'm excited to share more with you about Hollins and the opportunities we have for transfer students. Hollins is located in the heart of the Blue Ridge Mountains in Virginia. The city of Roanoke is small but vibrant with a thriving downtown and countless outdoor recreation opportunities. Campus is a convenient 15 minute drive from shops, museums, restaurants, and the airport. Our campus is located near regional metro metropolitan areas like DC, Charlotte, North Carolina, and our state capital of Richmond. And those nearby cities give students a place to explore for day trips away from campus, as well as the opportunity to complete month long internships sponsored by our alumni network in those areas. Some fun facts about Hollins University. We were founded in 1842 and we are the oldest women's college in Virginia. We're home to about 800 students, and our students are encouraged to explore their unique interests through the liberal arts, and we offer 29 different majors for students to choose from. With an average class size of 12 students, our students are supported through close relationships with professors and advisors. In addition to our academics, our thriving Division III athletics program competes in the Old Dominion Athletics Conference, or ODAC, if you're an athlete, you can check out hollandsports.com to learn more about our teams and the recruiting process. Despite our small size, we value being a diverse community where all identities and perspectives are welcomed and celebrated. You'll find that here at Hollands, about a third of our students identify as students of color and or Hispanic or Latinx. Our community embraces students for who they are and strives to make Hollands feel like home for everyone. In addition to our in-class academic supports, Hollins encourages students to take their learning beyond the classroom. The Rutherford Center for Experiential Learning ensures that students have access to hands-on learning through study abroad, individual research, internships, leadership, and community engagement. In fact, 91% of Hollins students take advantage of these opportunities and access to these programs is guaranteed for every interested student. Now, if this sounds like a good fit for you, let's talk about the application process. It's free to apply to Hollins and you can access our transfer application online at hollins.edu. In addition to the application itself, we require a high school transcript and transcripts from every college or university you have attended and unofficial versions of these transcripts work great for admission purposes. Our test scores are optional, and we truly mean test optional, so students will be considered for both admission and scholarships, whether they or not they choose to submit their test scores. For students transferring from the Virginia Community College system, um, you might be interested in our guaranteed admission agreement with um, the VCCS system, and this applies to students who have earned a transfer-oriented associate's degree from a VCCS school and graduate with a cumulative GPA of 2.5 or above. And students who fit that criteria are able to pursue any major at Hollins. They are not boxed into any particular program. Additionally, um, as of this fall, we have a new um, gen ed policy for students coming from the Virginia Community College system. And students who have earned an associate's degree in any of the fields listed here will arrive at Hollins with their gen ed requirements fulfilled. And so there's a number of associate of arts, associate of arts and sciences, and associate of science degrees that can fulfill the gen ed requirements here at Hollins. 
Another way students from the Virginia Community College System schools can satisfy their general education requirements at Hollins is by completing our transfer module at your VCCS institution. And that is available on our website. It includes a set of core classes in English, humanities, social science, history, math, oral communication, and science. And if the transfer module is complete, that does fulfill the gen eds at Hollins. Um, otherwise, you can use our transfer guide to see which individual credits will transfer over. Now, students are not required to submit, to submit or complete the transfer module. Transfer students from any college or university, not just VCCS schools, can submit a copy of their college transcripts to transfer at hollands.edu. And we will request a transfer credit evaluation for you from our university registrar's office. Once we have that TCE, that transfer credit evaluation available, we will reach out to you, share that, and walk you through what that means for your credit evaluation and your credits transferring into Hollands. All of our transfer students are guaranteed scholarships, and those scholarships begin at $20,000 a year and are renewable throughout your time at Hollands. Those who are a member of Phi Theta Kappa are eligible for an additional $2,000 um, scholarship award, and 100% of our admitted students do receive financial aid. We also have about 36% of our undergraduate students receiving federal Pell Grants, and so we encourage our students to submit the FAFSA, and our FAFSA code is 003715. For those of you who are Virginia residents, um, you should also know that you will be eligible for the Virginia Tuition Assistance Grants, and this is for students who are from Virginia who opt to attend a private school at a participating university um, in Virginia. And so Holland is one of those universities, so you would receive um, at least $4,000, depending on what the legislature approves, for um, additional um, scholarship money towards your tuition here at Holland. And again, for individuals who have received an associate's degree and meet the qualifying EFC and GPA requirements, they are eligible for our Virginia transfer grant. So those are some great perks that can be $2,000 as well in state funding. So some great perks there that um, Virginia residents have as well. But I should say that we welcome students from all over the country. Um, and if you are interested in learning more about Holland, we encourage you to contact us or to visit our campus. And you can earn up to $1,000 in a transfer grant towards your first year uh, scholarship package by um, visiting us as well. So thank you very much. And I hope you will um, hope learn more about Holland in the future. Thank you so much. Up next, we have Radford University. All right, good evening, everyone. Thank you all so much for being with us tonight. My name is Whitney Pitchkey, and I am one of the regional assistant directors of admission for Radford University. So I work with all transfer students who are coming from the Hampton Roads area of Virginia, as well as any student coming from um, states south of Virginia. So I'm like, super excited to be with you all tonight. So let's just jump in to give you some of the general information about Radford. We are located right in the heart of the New River Valley um, in Radford, Virginia. So you just heard about the wonderful Hollands University in Roanoke. We are about 45 minutes south of uh, the city of Roanoke, um, just south of uh, Blacksburg, where Virginia Tech is. So um, if you're familiar with that section of the New River Valley, we are right, uh, right there off of 81. Um, we are right under about 11,000 students. Uh, so we are a nice mid-sized campus. We're not huge, but we're not super, super tiny. Um, um, we're sort of a mid-sized university and you'll see as we get into a little bit further in the presentation, you really get sort of the best of the big and the best of the small at Radford. Um, we have about 57% of our students are female, 43% are male, and about 30% of our students identify as first-generation college students and we're very proud of the work that our first-generation college students do when they get to Radford. So I mentioned that Radford feels uh, sort of like getting the best of the big and the best of the small. The academic environment is where Radford really feels like a small college because you have small classes, a small student to faculty ratio, and you, it, we intentionally keep our classes small so that you have the ability to have those really great one on one interactions with your professors with your fellow students. We have some really cool opportunities for classroom discussion, potentially even some classroom debate. Um, so no matter what you study at Radford, you will have a small, a small class. Um, the banner down the left-hand side of the page uh, there shows all of the different colleges that we have within Radford. 
the programs that we are probably most known for are our School of Education. That is actually how we were founded. We were founded in 1910 as a school for teachers. Um, so education is really our bread and butter. Um, we also have a very strong nursing program. So nursing has become one of our top programs, but we also have a very strong and mighty visual and performing arts college, the business college. Um, and of course, anything in the arts and sciences that you'd be interested in, we can take care of for you as well. Um, you do have the ability to come in um, as a transfer student with um, um, especially if you're coming from the Virginia Community College system with many of your credits already met towards the, um, the general education curriculum um, with um, the associate's degree, um, or even if you don't have the associate's degree, if you have about 60 credit hours, that will fulfill all of our general education requirements so that you can just focus on your major when you get to Radford. This next page here goes into a little bit more detail about all of our different programs. I won't spend too much time on this, um, but if you would like to get more information, feel free to scan the barcode at the bottom right hand side of the page there. That will take you to our website where you'll get all the information that you need about the particular program that you're interested in. You can see what the curriculum looks like, what students do once they graduate, um, what students do for internships, all those good things. So feel free to check that out. So now we'll move into campus life. So this is where Radford really feels like a large institution. Um, so in terms of the campus life offerings, this is where you really get the best of the big. So we do have 16 division one collegiate athletic programs in the Big South Conference. We have a very strong club and intramural sports program as well. We have over 300 clubs and organizations, everything from Greek life to student religious organizations to service and volunteer organizations. You name it, there is a way for you to get involved in some way, shape or form. Um, study abroad is also very popular at Radford. It, there's nothing on the slide here, but there are about 70 programs um, in residence at Radford that you can choose from if you would like to study abroad and transfer students are certainly able to do that as as well. We have many living learning communities on our campus, um, including a transfer housing community. So if you would like to live with other transfer students and have a similar shared transfer experience, you are able to choose that. But we also have living learning communities that are tied to other programs as well. So moving into uh, the cost of Radford, we are very conscious of uh, wanting to make uh, Radford an affordable education. So um, our cost is listed there, as you can see, um, around 22,000 for in-state students and around 33,000 for out-of-state students. This is all inclusive tuition fees, room and board. So this is everything. The only thing that that does not cover is your books and your parking pass, but everything else is covered in that cost. As you can see, though, on the top of the banner there, about 82% of our students receive some form of financial aid. So, of course, the need-based financial aid um, is the, the big one. So you obviously want to make sure you get your FAFSA in um, so that we can give you um, full consideration for um, uh, for need-based financial aid. And then we do have two transfer scholarships. One is our Transfer Excellence Scholarship, which is for students who are coming in with at least 30 credit hours and at least a 3.0 GPA. And then that scholarship is a $2,000 amount that is renewable for your uh, next year at Radford. And then we also offer the Phi Theta Kappa Scholarship as well. Uh, so this is for students who are in Phi Theta Kappa at their current two-year college. That is a $3,000 scholarship and that is renewable for your final or your next year at Radford as well. So as far as the application goes, we have two applications that we use. We have the common application as well as a Radford specific application. We do not have a preference for which one you use. So feel free to submit whichever one you would prefer. It is a free application, so there's no application fee at all. The uh, priority deadline for the fall semester is March the 1st. And for the spring semester, it is November the 1st. What we would need from you in addition to your application is we need official transcripts from each college or university that you have previously attended. We only need a high school transcript if you have less than 24 credit hours or if you have not completed a college level math course. In that case, we do ask that you submit your high school transcript just so that we can get a little bit more information about your academic background. And finally, if you'd like to connect, if you'd like to come visit, we would love to have you on our campus. So feel free to uh, take a screenshot of this with our email, uh, telephone number, and our website. And we would love to have you on campus. And I uh, look forward to working with you all in the future. Thank you so much. And a reminder to our participants to use that Q&A function if you have questions for any of our schools here during their presentations. Up next, we have Norfolk State University. Share my screen here. And we will. Hello, everyone. My name is uh, Derek Henry, and I serve as one of the transfer admission counselors at Norfolk State University. And I'm just going to pull this up, see if y'all can see that. All right. Yep, 
it looks good. Okay, cool. All right, so Norfolk State, where are we located? Norfolk State is located in the core of Hampton Roads metropolitan name area. Norfolk is one of the oldest um, in the Hampton Roads and considered to be a historic urban, financial, and cultural part of the region. Uh, this is a great overhead shot of Norfolk State University. Um, at, at the top of your screen, you can see the university in the proximity to downtown Norfolk, which is a huge tourist area. Um, Norfolk State is definitely one of the top 20 HBCUs in um, the country, historically black college and university. Some fun facts about Norfolk State, uh, we're the home of the uh, world's largest naval base and North American headquarters. Um, for any students who are thinking about attending for um, medical school, uh, Eastern Virginia Medical School is right around the corner and we do have a partnership with them as well. Uh, this is a great shot of campus. We, are, uh, we have partners with the Norfolk Light Tide Rail. Um, I'm happy to say that campus is slowly but surely getting back to normal um, through the uh, past two years that we've had. The admission requirements for Norfolk State University, you just transfer students just a minimum 2.0 GPA with 12 college level credit level hours. We do require all official college transcripts and you can submit those transcripts to us uh, electronically, which is the preferred method um, through Parchment, uh, National Student Clearinghouse or eScript. You can also mail them in or bring them to us in person. Uh, an enrollment snapshot, uh, we have a little over 5,500 students now um, with a, a ratio of male to female, 32% um, male, 68% female. We do get most of our students from in-state, but as you can see, 25% of our students do come to us from out of state. Um, our undergraduates um, come in at 4,952 and we have over 463 graduate students. This is a cool resource that we use here in Norfolk State. It's called TESS. It's a transfer equivalency system. You can actually go and find your school and you can type in the courses that you've taken and it'll show you what they're equivalent to here in Norfolk State. Uh, we have 31 undergraduate majors, 18 master's doctorate and professional programs, over hundred clubs and organizations with a student teacher ratio around 18 to one on an acreage of 134 acres and growing. And this is just a shot of uh, some of our majors and online degree programs as well. And some of our top programs, uh, definitely among transfer students, nursing is one of our top, um, social work, um, computer science, business. Those are some of our top majors among transfer students. Um, a cost breakdown of Norfolk State. Um, we are one of the most affordable HBCUs as well. Our in-state tuition comes in at 20,586 out of state 32514 and those fees do include standard room standard meal plans um, students who are looking to um, use financial aid take advantage of your priority deadlines October 1st and March 15th and the scholarships that we offer we do have two scholarships that we offer our transfer students a regular transfer grant along with the chef grant that is offered to students who have completed their associates from a Virginia community college and come directly to Norfolk State within one year Student life on campus is, like I said, getting back to normal. Students are on campus, um, just enjoying. One thing about Norfolk State being an HBCU, we definitely have a uh, vibe, a family-oriented atmosphere, and it is something that really does resonate with our students, so we enjoy and welcome all of our new Spartans. As you can see, we definitely bleed the green and gold at Norfolk State University. 58% of our students do live on campus in one of our 10 residential communities. Um, our Spartan Legion Band, we are going to Pasadena, California next year to attend the Rose Bowl Parade. We're really excited about that. Um, we do have Divine Nine Greek Letter Organizations here as well, if that's something you would like to pursue. And um, we are a D1 school with all of our sports. I'm not sure if anyone follows uh, basketball, but we did get to the big dance. Baylor kind of spanked on us, but we're still really proud of our students, our, our guys basketball team that did win the MEAC championship. And stay connected. Let me know if you have any questions. My contact information and email address are right there. Thank you so much. Thank you. We appreciate you letting us know more about your wonderful institution. Up next, we have James Madison University. Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Chris Carlberg, and I am an assistant director with the Office of Admissions at James Madison University, and I'm excited to be here with you this evening. Thank you for joining us. 
you may already know this, but JMU is one of the state public universities in Virginia. Uh, it stretches out over 725 acres and is surrounded by mountains. So it's a very beautiful part of the state in the Shenandoah Valley. Uh, and uh, fun fact, JMU is one of the most Instagram locations in the state of Virginia. Uh, and it's not hard to see why when looking at this picture. Uh, some great things about JMU, uh, when students come to JMU, they become members of both the JMU community and the Harrisonburg community. Uh, Harrisonburg is a neat small town of about 50,000. It's a two hour drive from Northern Virginia uh, or from um, DC and Richmond. So just kind of depending on traffic, of course. Uh, and with a population of about 50,000 in Harrisonburg. Uh, downtown is located just about a mile from our campus and offers lots of great locally owned restaurants and shops. Um, so our students really do get involved in both JMU's community and the city of Harrisonburg. Because Harrisonburg is, a, uh, is the population center for the surrounding area, I also like to share that Harrisonburg does offer a lot of the great comforts that you may be used to where you live. Um, it is, uh, of course, surrounded by rural area, but Harrisonburg is a very suburban type location uh, in the Shenandoah Valley. Uh, some great things about JMU is the experience. Uh, the academic experience contributes to this idea in the sense of community. 98% of our classes are taught by faculty. We are a teaching institution, which is rare for our school our size. We have 20,000 students and uh, undergraduate students, 22,000 total students. Uh, so we do focus on that undergraduate experience. And although we are a bigger school, our average class size is still 25, and our student to teacher ratio is 16 to 1. Uh, we do have some of those larger lecture classes, but that's going to be for gen ed classes. Uh, one of the great things that this offers our teachers and students get to know each other because our teachers are teaching the classes, but our students also have the opportunity to get to know their faculty members and work really closely with them on re research projects and uh, doing one on one things. Uh, about 80% of our students have that opportunity to either do a research project, a practicum student teacher internship before they graduate. I like to talk about one of my great friends who recently graduated from the biology department here at JMU. Uh, she was invited to go to Canada to study snakes with one of her professors, which she got to do. Uh, and then when she came back, she continued to work uh, on that research and was able to present in Louisiana and Florida. Uh, I picked this one because I know it. It's easy also for the hard sciences when you think about research, but this is true for other areas too. In business, education, the visual performing arts, and history, which is what I got my degree in in the master's program at JMU. Couple, another great fact about JMU is that we uh, are, because of the hands-on experience and that sense of community that our students get, uh, gets our students jobs. 98% of our students of the last three years, just about 98% of our students are out in the world. Uh, they're either working or in graduate school or involved in other career related endeavors within six months of graduating, which earns JMU uh, the ranking as the number one school in Virginia uh, for getting a job after graduation. Now that you know a little bit about JMU, let's talk a little bit more about our application process for transfers. Uh, we have three deadlines we have, uh, and we admit students for uh, fall, spring, and summer, um, and you'll see those dates on there. Uh, we have, uh, we require an online application, so we have our own through ApplyWeb, or we are also on the coalition application, and you can use either one. Uh, we require high school transcripts, official high school transcripts, and your official college transcripts. Uh, so once you have those and submit those, uh, that's all we need to do is to review your application. We do not accept test scores for transfer students, so you don't even have to worry about that. Um, and there's some optional pieces that you can supplement your application with, but we really do focus on that transcript and your academic history and performance. We do offer a guaranteed admissions agreement with all of the Virginia Community Colleges, which is a great pathway to JMU as well. Um, so definitely check that out if you're thinking about getting an associate's degree uh, before transferring. We make our decisions based on your academic history and performance. Uh, competitive applicants as transfer students will have cumulative GPA of 3.0 or above, uh, for, and that's a cumulative of all institutions if you've been to more 
two, more than one. We focus on core curriculum in lab sciences, language arts, mathematics, and social sciences. And that language arts category includes English, composition, literature, foreign language, and communication. So it's a big, it's a big group of language arts classes. Uh, we really do want to see that students have taken at least one of those core classes uh, in each area, uh, a college level class. Our registrar's office has a great website for called Transferology, which allows us transfer students to check to see what kind of transfer credit they're going to get at JMU if they do come to JMU and decide to come to JMU. Uh, and you just plug in your classes that you're taking at whatever institution you're at, and it will tell you what classes you might get credit for at JMU. A couple things too, uh, be, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, we are excited to help and answer questions. I have just answered, um, you can sign up for our mailing list. Uh, if you email our admissions office directly, they will put you in contact with your regional counselor. So we all have different regions across Virginia and outside of the state. So definitely work uh, with that. I do also recommend, uh, many of my colleagues have already said, fill out the FAFSA. We do have um, some scholarships available for transfer students um, and uh, filling out that FAFSA is important step in that. We have a priority deadline of March 1st uh, for uh, the following school year. And uh, if you have any questions about that or about the admissions process or JMU in general, uh, feel free to reach out to our office and come visit for a tour. Thank you so much. And a reminder to go ahead and use that Q&A function if you have questions for any of our schools here during their presentations. Up next, we have School of Continuing and Professional Studies at University of Virginia. My apologies, I'm having some technical difficulties with my PowerPoint this evening, but thank you very much for joining us. I'm Colin Alford, a recruitment outreach specialist for transfer students with the School of Continuing and Professional Studies at the University of Virginia. And I'm joined by Christy Mendoza McCall, who is also a recruitment outreach specialist, and she'll be monitoring the Q&A. Um, we look forward to sharing information on the UVA Bachelor of Interdisciplinary Studies degree completion program. We also offer a second degree completion option, the Bachelor of Professional Studies in Health Sciences Management or BPHM degree. However, in the interest of time this evening, we're gonna focus on our BIS degree. We are the only one of the 12 academic schools at UVA that offers a flexible undergraduate degree option with part-time classes and, an, and evening online classes. The BIS degree was launched just over 20 years ago and was developed with a real intentionality around serving the specific needs of adult learners and with a larger goal of creating greater access to a UVA liberal arts, arts degree. You'll find that our BIS community is incredibly diverse. We have students from a wide range of, of ages, academic backgrounds and pathways, work experience and career aspirations. We are much more diverse than the typical UVA student population and students who are admitted tend to be quite successful in our program because we put such a focus on student success. Our applicants use our um, separate SCPS application, not the common application. We also recognize that many of our students are juggling school with full-time work and our family responsibilities. They appreciate the academic reputation and rigor of a UVA degree and are seeking a true learning community. They appreciate our commitment to student success at every step of the process from our earliest conversations through admissions, orientation, throughout the program until graduation and beyond. Many of our students do have coursework um, from one of the of the Virginia Community College schools, as well as coursework from other colleges. However, having an associate's degree is not required. Our faculty are distinguished professors and industry professionals who bring current real world experience and thinking to the classroom and create highly relevant and valuable learning experiences. They are also personally vested in your success. They take the time to get to know you and teach with a flexibility that acknowledges the other demands in your life. Faculty also serve at as advisors to students are assigned and are assigned prior to your first semester. Most of our classes are taught one evening a week via Zoom, just like this. And we do also um, 
have some a popular lunchtime option that meets two days a week for an hour and, and 15 minutes. Um, our classes um, are also, most are the synchronous live, although we do have a few asynchronous options, they are just not as popular. If a student transfers um, into our program with the maximum 60 semester transfer credits and takes one or two classes every fall, spring, and summer, it does take just about three years to complete their um, bachelor's degree. Um, some students finish more quickly, some actually move a little more slowly. Uh, most uh, with the BIS degree, students choose a concentration. Most of our concentrations require 18 credits or six classes. However, the healthcare management requires 24 credits. Our IT concentration has a web development focus and our cybersecurity analysis concentration provides a good blend of technical and soft skills to prepare someone for an entry-level job, entry-level analyst job. There's no coding or um, background um, that is required. The business and psychology concentrations do have prerequisites, which must be completed prior to a student declaring their concentration. And students declare their concentration um, at the time of application. Application. The business concentration requires an accounting class, micro and macroeconomics, and statistics. The psychology does require an intro or general um, psychology course. With our BIS curriculum, it has four components, the foundational seminars, which all students complete. Um, the first one is a transformations in reading and writing and thinking in the liberal arts, and that's taken in their first semester. And then students have a choice between a liberal studies seminar and two conduct inquiry seminars. One would be in the humanities and one in the social sciences. The concentration is the second component, which we spoke about on the previous slide. And the degree electives, um, which are determined by the number of transfer credit hours. For example, if a student begins or enters our program with 60 semester credits um, at transfer, then they would have fewer degree electives to complete. Lastly, students complete a capstone or senior thesis. Um, this project allows students to focus more on a topic of uh, that is of personal or professional or academic or interest, um, and it allows them to really tailor this part of the degree um, to um, their goals um, and, <clears throat> and aspirations. One of the things that we really um, do um, like to provide to our students is what we call pre-admission evaluation. Um, we basically start working or like to start working with students several semesters before they apply. And with our pre-admission evaluation, students upload um, unofficial copies of their transcripts to our website, and then they receive detailed feedback about where they stand in relation to the admissions requirements. Um, because we work with students typically several semesters before they apply, um, we can help them track um, that they're meeting the admissions requirements, as well as if they're completing an associate degree, say at, at one of the VCCS schools, that they're um, meeting those requirements first and foremost, um, ticking off our boxes and then getting um, all set and ready to apply. Because this is such a high touch process, um, students who do go through the pre-admissions process typically do gain admission. The um, admissions requirements uh, are pretty straightforward. Um, high school diploma or equivalent. Students can begin our program or apply to our program with as few as 45 semester um, credit hours all the way through six, up to 60. Um, we are looking um, for those transfer, transferable credits to complete what we call our liberal studies core, which I'll show you on the next slide. Students must be in good standing at their most recently attended college and have um, at least a 2.0 at their most recently attended school. Um, these again are just some basic criteria. Um, this gives you a brief look at the liberal studies core and then just to kind of wrap things up here. Um, this lists the different application components, um, in addition to those courses that we need and our deadlines, our cohorts start twice a year in the fall and in the spring. Um, please be sure to reach out if you have any questions and Christy and I are more than happy to help you. Good luck on your transfer journey. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And to our um, participants viewing this today, Marymount University was unable to make it, but they do um, encourage you to check out their website and also get in touch with their admissions counselors. We have a few minutes for some Q&A, so we'll go ahead and ask everyone to um, turn back on their cameras at this point, and we will um, have time for a few questions here. 
Our first question for the evening is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? You can give your nuggets of wisdom um, to our participants here today, our students. So we'll go in the same order, starting with Holland's, and um, we'll go down the list from there. Thank you, Jenny. I think that some of the best advice you can give students looking through the college search process, and this would also apply to transfer students, is to really think about the different kind of scholarships available at the schools that you're uh, pursuing. And so a lot of times you won't know what scholarship packages you yourself will receive until after you've applied and gotten your financial aid offer and those scholarships. And so you might be surprised that some schools um, offer you more money than you anticipated and, and actually can be much more affordable than what you thought. So I would always encourage you to submit that FAFSA and to get um, different offers from schools so that you can compare what that would be financially. So I would say um, just take advantage of whatever opportunities that the universities that you're planning to apply to or that you'd like to go to, take advantage of whatever visit opportunities they have available. Um, many of us will have specific transfer events that you can attend that will be very specific to the transfer process and give you really great information. Um, I know a lot of us are also still doing some virtual things. So depending on what your comfort level is with visiting um, with COVID um, and, all that fun stuff that has become part of our new normal. Um, just take advantage of all the visit opportunities because um, that really is such a great way for you to get a full sense of what the university has to offer and what being a student on the campus is really like. One of the things I like to tell college students, students looking at the college search is to ask lots of questions. Um, you'll find, as you probably already know, uh, we all tend to do things a little bit differently, as you probably even saw in our presentations. Um, so asking those questions and making sure that you have all the correct information um, and maybe even making a Google Doc so you can keep track of it in one location that's easily accessible uh, no matter where you happen to be. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I always uh, feel that students need to look to apply to a to the transfer school that will be the best fit for them um, and help them reach their end goal. Um, take time um, if you're required to write essays. Um, have a second reader look at them, not to edit content, but to make sure that your grammar and punctuation are correct. Um, and write from your heart um, so that the um, application readers do get to know you a bit, bit more of you as well as your writing style. And if you are asked to submit letters of recommendations, um, look for maybe a professor that you've made a connection with, or maybe an, em an employer, um, just not a family member or a friend. And I would say, um, you know, choosing a school to continue your education is a huge deal, you know, so kind of be your best advocate. You know, we're all here to help you along through that process, but, you know, do your research as um, the panelists have said today, find out what schools offer your program, what schools offering you free money. Free money never hurts, um, but definitely what school is the best fit for you in terms of your program and your end goal and your life career decisions. Absolutely, thank you everyone. Um, and I guess my piece of advice in this too, kind of along what Chris was saying about um, staying organized is to have a dedicated email for this process and one that sounds professional as well. Um, you know, something like your first name dot last name, so that way you can keep everything organized in that sense too. So your spam's not going in with your college search process too. Um, so up next, we have another question and that is, what is one thing you want students to remember about your school? So you get another uh, moment here to tell us um, more about your institution. So we'll go in the same order, starting with Hollins University. Great, thank you. I really appreciate the opportunities that students at Hollins have for experiential learning. And I talked a little bit about that in um, my overview, but we really uh, guarantee internships for all of our students starting their first year on campus. And 75% of our students will complete at least one internship and half of our students complete um, more than one internship when they graduate. And actually 58% of our students study abroad. And so these are really enriching opportunities that allow our students to be competitive on the job market, um, really have this nice component of their education that is helping to enrich their experience and help them pursue their passions. And it's very affordable um, and we help students through those processes. 
So I didn't talk about this, but I'm going to actually share a fun fact um, for what I would like for you all to remember about Radford. So um, as you can see above me in my um, Zoom background, there's a red plaid banner. Um, our uh, mascot is the Highlander, and we have a very strong Scottish um, influence um, in Southwest Virginia and specifically in the Radford community. Um, so every year to kind of honor our Scottish heritage, we have a big um, Highlander festival with um, Highlander games and Highlander um, I'm sorry, Scottish music, Scottish uh, food, Scottish crafts, um, all kinds of things. And the community comes together uh, with the university to put on this uh, big Highlander festival. There's traditional Scottish games, um, all the men don their kilts. Um, it's just a really, really fun time. And um, it has become um, almost as big as homecoming at Radford, if not bigger than homecoming. So anyway, just a fun fact that I always like to share. Um, one, well, one thing that I would like to share about Norfolk State, being that it is a HBCU, is just the overall family, family atmosphere that we offer. Um, you know, Norfolk State is steeped in a cultural atmosphere, so if that is something that you're looking for, uh, definitely consider Norfolk State as a place to continue your college education. Um, the staff and the faculty here are really invested in your success, and um, it really does show in, when you come here, you'll definitely feel it. One of the things I think uh, to remember about JMU, and it, it, it's going to sound kind of hokey, but um, uh, Duke's Hold Doors is one of our kind of common phrases at JMU, and it's really a symbol of the sense of community that we have, that we literally hold the doors for one another, even if someone is half the hallway down, um, you'll stand there and hold the door. And I thought that was something that might go away because of the pandemic and social distancing, but we even managed to do it throughout the pandemic when we were still in classes on campus, people would, you know, do the little dance with their foot and hold the door and uh, just making sure. And I just think that really shows that we are here to help each other and support each other and that we, it takes a community. And there's a lot of people at JMU um, that are here for you to help you succeed in whatever path you're choosing. I think with the school continuing our professional studies um, that uh, students um, understand that receiving a degree from our program is a UVA degree. Uh, we get a lot of questions. Is it a real degree? Yes, it is a real degree. You earn all the rights and privileges thereof. It does not say uh, that it is online. Um, and we are proud that we're able to offer that flexible transfer um, evening option uh, for students. Thank you so much. It looks like we have time for one more question this evening. So our last question is, what is one myth you'd like to debunk on the college admissions process? So maybe you've heard something along the way that you'd like to um, clear the air on. So we'll go in that same order. Great. So I think something that students often think is that they have to guess how to go through the admissions process. They have to guess what we're looking for, um, when they need to submit things. Um, and kind of what's expected of them in that application process. And that is not the case. We are happy to talk with students. That's one of my favorite parts of my job is talking with students and helping them through the application and enrollment process. So if you have a question, please do not hesitate to reach out. That's what we're here for. Um, I think I would say that um, you don't have to have a specific number um, to be competitive for admission. You know, you don't have to just have um, one specific GPA or one specific test score or a magic credit, um, you know, number of credits coming in as a transfer student. Um, you know, we are all the people behind um, this review process. And so we really do take the time to get to know you and to really get to know what you're hoping to do and what your, your goals are. Um, so, this is it's very much a human process. I think so many people assume that there's a number and if you don't meet the number, then you don't get admitted. Um, and if you meet it, then you do. Um, and that's not the case. You know, we are people um, and we like to get to know the, the person behind the application. And it's, it's very, very much a human process. Um, I guess one myth I could debunk was just that, you know, the admissions process is just overwhelming. You know, at Norfolk State, we do have a large portion of our students who are first generation students, and this is their first time at it. So we have a dedicated staff here who are, who are ready and willing to help um, ask those questions. There's no such thing as a stupid question. And, you know, the process isn't as overwhelming as you think. Just, just, just take one step and we'll take the rest for you. 
I think sometimes uh, one of the things that it feels like there's a, you know, uh, some kind of wizard behind the curtain sending you on all these wild goose chases to get all these things to be competitive for college admissions. But that's like everyone else has already said, that's not the case. So it's really straightforward. Um, and we are going to be transparent and straightforward with you. So, um, you know, take, you know, reach out with questions. We're going to be, we're going to answer those questions and they're going to be the answers that so we're not going to be giving you false answers or uh, sending you on wild goose chases uh, to kind of figure this transfer process out. The advantage of going last is that I can say every other um, representative this evening has said something I would have said. It is, it is absolutely true. And we are all here to help transfer students. Um, you are a unique student and we recognize those, those needs and work very hard to meet those. And please feel free to reach out and make sure that you, you make that, that contact with us because we are here to help. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And thank you to all of our participants for joining us today. We really appreciate you um, taking the time out of your evening um, to hear more about these institutions. When you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick five question survey. So we'd appreciate any feedback that you can provide. And we encourage you to check back to the schedule and sign up for more sessions that are happening right after this one. You'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other session recordings at strivescan.com slash Virginia. Thank you so much and best of luck in your um, transfer selection process. Have a great evening.